Today, I begin my four-day solo journey across the United States by train. I'll be traveling for a whopping 80 hours from San Francisco all the way to New York City, covering five and a half thousand kilometers on two different Amtrak trains. In part one of my mammoth expedition, I board one of North America's most scenic trains, the California Zephyr. I'm about to spend 54 hours living in Amtrak's Superliner Roomette cabin whilst crossing through seven different states over almost 4,000 kilometers, eventually leaving me in Chicago. I'll give you a full tour of my cabin, show you the food, the amenities, and we'll dive into what life is really like on board. My adventure begins at 8am in San Francisco, where I've just spent a handful of days exploring. The first leg of my journey is actually a connecting throughway bus ride to a place called Emeryville. I think I'm saying that right, which is the closest Amtrak station to San Francisco, and where the famous California Zephyr begins. minutes later and I'm in Emeryville. The station is so simple, clean, has lots of seating and most importantly you can get a coffee here plus stock up on a bunch of snacks for the train ride ahead. It was pretty exciting because before my train arrived I got a little glimpse at the coast starlight which is another journey I would really like to take off one day. After eagerly awaiting the arrival of my home for the next three days, at 9am the Zephyr appears. That's my train, I'm about to board. Holy moly, I'm on the train. I'm in my cabin. It's so cute. It's so teeny. <laughs> I gotta figure out where to put this stuff. For the longest time I have had this train on my bucket list and I'm finally here and I'm doing it all by myself. Apparently the California Zephyr is one of the most scenic trains in all of North America, which is a big reason why I wanted to take this train in particular. Plus, I've always had this fascination with crossing an entire country via train. And it just so happens that I'm meeting my friend in New York City. I could have just flown from San Francisco, but no, 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 no. I wanted to hop on a train and travel for four days. I've just met our lovely train attendant, Gregory. I believe he takes care of this whole car that I'm in. And he just made a big announcement over the speaker, giving us the breakdown of everything we need to know, all of the important details, such as where the coffee can be found and how long we can find that coffee for. In the center of this car, you can help yourselves too. It will be up to about 11 o'clock, maybe a little longer, depending on how much is left in that bottom. But we do post to break it down at 11 o'clock, but I might leave it up a little longer he also delved into bits and pieces like where the bathroom is where the showers are where we can find our towels so much good information so don't worry as soon as you hop on the Amtrak train they're gonna make an announcement and answer all of the questions that you probably have when boarding but you do need to wait until your ticket is scanned if it hasn't been scanned already There are, I believe, three different types of accommodation that you can book on this train. There's your coach or regular seat, which I would not want to do for four days. There's your roomette, which is what I've booked, which is pretty tiny and cute. And then there's your bedroom, which is a lot bigger, and I believe those might have an ensuite bathroom. So, like I said, I've booked a roomette for just myself. This is perfect for one person, but obviously you can have two people in here. It would be a little squished in here with Ludwig, I think. See, I told you I wouldn't fit. Jam my head in between here, then I can fit. This is my accommodation for three days, but not only that, I have all of my meals and drinks and coffee, most importantly, included as well. So although this ticket was not cheap, a lot of stuff is included and it's a really unique way to travel. I can't believe that I'm gonna be able to see places in the United States that I never would have ever stepped foot in or seen with my own eyes before had I not taken this train. So I'm pretty excited about some of the views I'm gonna to see today, well, over the next three days. P.S. Stay till the end as I'll reveal the cost of my entire train journey at the end of this video. All 
Right, while I unpack and get settled into my wobbly new home, let's show you around my living quarters. Firstly, I have to address that upon entering, I was surprised to encounter a large sprinkling of crumbs around my seat and shelves, which immediately made me a little bit nervous about the cleanliness of my room. Luckily, as I continued to discover the space, everything else was spotless and felt very fresh. Phew, what a relief. Apparently this room is just over a meter wide and a little more than two meters in length, which felt teeny tiny compared to my most recent train ride, the luxurious Caledonian sleeper train. I still can't believe I had a double bed on a train. I have a double bed on a train. But if you love small living like I do, you'll absolutely adore this cute little space and appreciate the way they've utilized every bit of it. By day, there are two very comfortable seats that convert into a single bed at night. And there's another bed that folds down from above to form an upper bunk. But since it was just me, my train attendant simply made up the lower bed. I was pleasantly surprised by the amount of storage and space in here. I had a wardrobe or closet complete with coat hangers. There was a little shelf above with towels and a space below for my shoes as well as a few hooks. I found a perfect spot for my small suitcase right underneath one of the seats. If you do have a larger suitcase, however, you can check these in. I will mention as well that just outside our rooms were these shelves to store your luggage. A lot of people did do this, but I just decided to keep my things in my room as it fits so perfectly anyway. Next to one of the seats are more shelves, a little nook to place things, a long mirror and a pull-out table. There is also a trash can, two really comfy pillows and safety instructions. Around the room there was a bunch of different lighting, an attendant call button, temperature control and one power outlet, which could be tough if there are two of you, but I found it to be plenty. There are curtains on both the exterior and interior windows that can be completely closed via these little velcro pad things, and there is a lock for the door, but this can only be used from inside the room, so you'll just have to be aware of this as you leave your cabin. I found that during my time here, anyone who did choose to stay in a roomette or people I came in contact with were all very pleasant and seemed very trustworthy. I guess everyone staying in one of these are in the same boat, right? Our attendant Gregory just came around to all of the rooms just to introduce himself, answer a few questions if we have them. I just asked when the restaurant cart will be open because I'm quite hungry. I didn't have breakfast this morning. I'm starting to feel a little bit sick. I hope this isn't a sign of what's to come. I get a little bit of motion sickness, so I don't know why I booked a train. But then I had an apple and I felt okay, so fingers crossed. Located down the hall, just steps away from my room, there was a little water station with cups, and a little further on were the bathrooms, or restrooms as they call it. There were two toilets and I believe one shower, which don't you worry, I will show you in great detail later in the journey. Well, this is my first trip to the bathroom, first of many. It's definitely, definitely hard to stand up in here. Not that you're doing much standing in the bathroom anyway. I'm pretty sure I'm the very first person to walk in here, so at the moment it smells really nice. There is plenty of stuff. Lots of toilet paper, tissues, little cups, paper towels, lots of soap, toilet seat covers, which is great. Wow, okay. Nice big long tap, that's really good. I hate it when the taps are so close, you have to kind of like squeeze your hand to wash your hands, but Luckily, the tap is quite far out. Lots of space to wash your hands, wash your face, do what you need. Now to test the toilet. I won't show you this bit though. Oh, just be aware, the toilet is like on a plane. Gives you a massive fright. It's very vicious. But I'm really happy to see how good this water pressure is in the sink. Look at that, fantastic. Hopefully this is an indication of how good water pressure will be in the shower. Let's see. Okay, so some of the scenic highlights on the California Zephyr include the Rocky Mountains, the Sierra Nevadas, Moffat Tunnel, Colorado's Gore, Byers and Glenwood Canyons, Winter Park, Truckee River, Donner Lake, San Pablo Bay, and the Carquinez Strait. I've only heard of two of those things, so I am very intrigued to see what those other things are. I wonder if they're gonna make an announcement over the speaker when we are about to pass through those places, just because I wouldn't know what I was looking at when, really. 
I already recommend this. I haven't even done anything on this train yet except sit down and film this, and I love it. This is so cool. Three days. stopping in Sacramento. I was wondering if when we stop, if they make an announcement whether we can hop off the fresh air or not, and they do. If we want to hop off, he said, make that decision right now. Don't wait until we stop and then to sort of go to the restroom and then make your way outside. He says like, make that decision now. So it's obviously quite a close call when you are stopping for those fresh air breaks. You have to like be off as soon as the train stops. I feel like since I'm gonna be living on a train for the next four days, I'm gonna make the most of getting some vitamin D whenever I get the chance. It is so beautiful and sunny here in Sacramento. I'm just gonna soak in the sunshine before I hop back into my cabin. The California Zephyr is Amtrak's second longest train after the Texas Eagle, which is one I also really hope to do in the future. The Zephyr runs every day in both east and west directions. And although the Zephyr visits 37 stations, it is not a hop on hop off train. So you'll need a ticket each time you get off and back on the next day. Most of the stops on this train are just a few minutes. However, every few hours there is a fresh air break stop, which lasts 10 to 15 minutes. And apparently, few times during the trip, there will be a crew change stop, which will last around 30 minutes. I have one of those coming up during the journey, and I will show you where we stop and what it's like. Almost immediately after my very first fresh air break, it was time for my first meal on board. Since I booked a sleeping accommodation, meals and drinks were included throughout my journey. So with a very hungry belly, I promptly took off upstairs. The onboard restaurant was located in the next car along from mine, and took almost no time at all to reach. The space was bright, filled with natural light, and had plenty of seating available, although I think I was among the very first few to enter. I have to admit, as an avid planner, I had studied the menu extensively online before boarding, but I was still excited to peruse through the options. Ludwig and I aren't big meat eaters, and in fact, we do eat a predominantly vegetarian diet. So when I saw that they offered a handful of veggie options, I was very impressed. But don't worry, I will be trying the salmon during the trip. And, spoiler alert, it exceeded my expectations. For lunch, I opted for the loaded baked potato. This came with vegan chili, cheddar cheese, bacon, sour cream, and scallions, but I passed on the bacon. Along with our meal, we could choose from a variety of different beverages, and I settled on a nice cold diet Coke, or a DC, as Trick Trendy would say. Okay, I've just come back from lunch. It was pretty nice. I mean, what you'd expect on a train. Tasted a little bit like plain food. The restaurant cart was pretty big. Lots of different booths. And I wasn't quite sure how the configuration would work. Would I just sit by myself? Would I share with other guests? But as soon as I walked in, basically the server pointed me right to a seat with a lady sitting by herself. And then a little while later, a gentleman joined us. So we were three random people all sat together. I'm going through a tunnel. My ears are really blocking. Ooh. Ooh. I'm block. Also, as I was finishing up lunch, they went around and handed out a few different little goodies. The lady I sat with, Pat, she said that there is one dessert that they hand out that feels heavy like a hockey puck, and I'm guessing this is it. It's called a butter cake. It's this big round thing, and it's very heavy. Someone told me that we were very soon going to be passing through the Sierra Nevadas. I'm on the left hand side of the train, but they said out the right hand side window is where you're going to get the best views. So I'm almost thinking I go and grab myself a coffee, I bring my butter cake and I go and sit in the observation lounge. Because yes, there is also an observation lounge. There's so many different compartments to this train, it's so exciting. <laughs>
That's beautiful. Wow, we just went through what I believe is Soda Springs and it looks like a beautiful place. I've never heard of this before, Soda Springs, but it looks stunning. This is exactly why I was excited to take this train because I can get a deeper look into little places that I never would normally be able to see. And I'm getting a preview of all the places I wanna go and visit further. Soda Springs is one of them. This here is Donner Lake. Never heard of it, but it's stunning. And some of the homes on the lakefront, wow. They are insane. This is so cool, guys. Oh my goodness. Everyone watching this, book yourself a trip on this train right now. And another tunnel. Our tenant just made an announcement saying, as we traverse as we traverse through the train, we must have shoes on, no bare feet and no socks. I wouldn't think to go out there with bare feet. Ugh. I'm glad they make an announcement about that though. No friggin' way. This town is so adorable. I think we're in a place called Truckee right now. I'm pretty sure following this train ride, I'm going to have about 50 places that I need to take Ludwig after this. I can't believe the amount of cute little towns I've seen already and it's literally, it's 3 o'clock and we left at 9am. It's been 6 hours and I've found so many places I want to return to already. We're going to be busy when we come back here. Okay, yep, it's called Truckee. Ludwig, we're coming back here. So it's, oh wow, hold on, pause, another beautiful sight. The camera just never does this justice, I swear. As I was saying, it's 3.40 p.m. A lady just came around knocking on all the sleeper cars asking for our dinner reservation. She said that either 5.30 or 6 p.m. was available. For dinner, I feel like I wanna just stay in my cabin and be in my own private little zone and just literally sit here and stare out the window. I do not want to leave this window. She said she's gonna send my attendant, Greg, to my room to take my order and organize the room service, so that's exciting. I keep thinking of little bits of advice that I can give you along the way so I don't forget. One thing I just thought of is bring sun cream. I wear sun cream every single day, which is lucky, so I've got it on already, but I've been sitting in my window doing work for the past three hours and the sun has been beaming down on me the whole time. So although you're indoors, just be wary that depending on where you're positioned, you could have sun on you for the majority of the day. So if I were you, make sure you have a bit of sun cream that you can pop on your hands. I've got the sun cream on my hands now because they're always in view of the sun and on my face and neck. So. Yeah, just a little thought for you there. Oh, gross. Oh, that's completely cold. Oh. We made it to Reno. Reno? Never know how to say that one. It's another stretch our legs break. We're apparently only here for about 10 minutes. I'm just gonna go up to the front of the train and get a cool photo. Woo, it's hot in Reno. All right, Greg just came around and took all of our room service orders. I thought it was about time I got some greens into my diet, so I got the mixed green salad with baby brie, Atlantic salmon for my entree, and for dessert I got the white chocolate blueberry cobbler cheesecake, that sounds so good. And with dinner we get one alcoholic beverage, and then any additional alcoholic beverages you've got to pay for it. I can have a wine with dinner every evening. Well, after Reno, we are now in Nevada. So I'm officially in my second state of the train ride so far. And you can tell instantly that it got way warmer. I had to turn my air con that little bit more since we entered Nevada. So it just brings me back memories of being in 48 degrees Celsius in Las Vegas just a month ago, way too hot. I not only have sweaty feet, sweaty palms, sweaty butt cheeks. I also have very sweaty eyelids and it's very uncomfortable. Well, we've just started to go really slow. We've just caught up to a freight train. So we're kind of stuck behind it for the next 10 miles or so until it's safe for them to be able to overtake it or 
somehow get past him. So for the next 20 minutes, he said, we'll be quite slow just to be really patient when things like this happen. So that's fine. And at this point, we are in the middle of nowhere and my phone has completely lost service, meaning my data does not work either right now. This would be a good time to mention that although many of the Amtrak trains do have Wi-Fi connections on board, the California Zephyr doesn't. So with that in mind, I purchased a one month SIM card with unlimited data from T-Mobile. And that worked perfectly fine for the majority of my journey. Do be aware that some parts of the trip will be spotty as service does go in and out, but honestly this didn't bother me. It really does give you a chance to disconnect and be present with the incredible views from your window. Room service has been delivered. Oh this smells so good. This is salmon with couscous rice type of looking thing. Lots of beans that's good because I need some vegetables. This cute little salad here with the brie cheese. Look how cute that is. Oh everything's sliding. And I got two packets of balsamic vinegar. Oh, cheapers. Oh, cheapers. Oh, shivers. And I'm about to sip my wine whilst we just casually wander through the desert. <laughs> it's times like these where I can't believe what I'm doing. I can't believe. I can't believe. This is my life. Wow. Holy moly, that's beautiful. Looks like salt flats or something. Wonder where the heck we are. Cheers. Oh, oh, there's a train. that salmon is really good. I wasn't sure what to expect because lunch was really good but felt like it had been sitting around for a while but this tastes a lot fresher than what lunch did. Mm. Great brie. And last thing on the menu is my cheesecake. A white chocolate blueberry cobbler cheesecake. Blueberry cobbler, vanilla bean chunks and swirled blueberry compote. expecting that to be so good. So good. Oh my gosh, this is so yummy. Mmm. Maybe I will be doing desserts every night. I totally thought I wouldn't, because I don't usually like desserts. Delicious. I think I polished off every single crumb. I can highly recommend the cheesecake, guys. Post dinner, I took a wobbly stroll up to the observation lounge just in time for sunset. At this point, we were traveling through a place called Lovelock, still in Nevada. The pinky orange tones lit up the mountains beautifully in the background, and every now and then we would pass through some unusual looking structures. It truly is hard to put into words how surreal this felt. a couple of laps up and down the train. It's nice to get a few steps in before I retire to my room. Upon returning to my room, I was greeted with a cozy bed that Greg had thoughtfully made up for me while I was upstairs. I jumped straight into my PJs, washed the face, and got tucked in, wondering where in the US I would find myself in the morning. before. What am I on about? I've slept on two. Our XPT Australia train from the Gold Coast to Sydney and the luxurious Caledonian sleeper train in Scotland. And spoiler alert, I plan to do a lot more. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel for loads of fun train adventures to come. Seriously, so many adventures. You're definitely, definitely going to want to click that button. So I was honestly a little bit nervous and had no idea what to expect last night, but wow. I feel incredibly refreshed. I snoozed my alarm like four times just because I did not want to hop up this morning. It was so comfortable. The rocking of the train actually worked for me this time. I slept until eight in the morning. Something I never normally do. Wow, eight o'clock, really? I've just woken up to the craziest views. This is so fun, this is so fun. I'm so happy I did this. I'm so happy. Oh, oh. What? 
all night. The problem is coming on this trip is making sure you have enough space and storage on your phone and camera. This is so different to the desert we were just in last night. Let's have a look on Google Maps. We have passed Salt Lake City. Does that mean, oh my gosh, we're in Utah. it is. I think breakfast has to be my favorite part of the day. Already, I get a croissant and it's warm. Yay, yay, yay. This is so good. I could literally just have five croissants for breakfast and be happy. The main event, got some strawberries, some oatmeal, some strawberry yogurt, and I did get what looks like brown sugar and raisins. Pretty good. Nice and plain. Actually, exactly what I feel like after having a gigantic piece of cheesecake last night. This feels nice and healthy and refreshing. Okay, I feel refreshed. I'm currently in the exact same clothes that I wore yesterday. I know, but that's because my bed is still down and my suitcase with all of my clothes is underneath. So this was just the easiest thing to grab. And I also plan on having a shower today. So I'll show you that adventure when it happens. I hope, I hope, I hope it's warm because on the Caledonian sleeper train, that shower was like, for a reason cold. I had like an ice shower. <laughs> that shower was so cold, which was refreshing and it woke me up, but I'd much prefer something a little bit more warm, at least lukewarm. The conductor just made an announcement that apparently we're gonna be passing through what's called the Book Cliffs, which is, I think he said, one of only two mountain ranges like that in the United States or in North America. I like how they actually do make announcements if there is something pretty spectacular that you're going to be passing by, just so that you know to get ready to look out the window. They'll also let you know whether it's on the east or the west, so you can kind of gather your things and go upstairs to the observation lounge if you need, or if you can just stay in your room and look out the window. So plenty of information at all times. You're not gonna really get an opportunity to miss stuff here. front row seat of these book-like mountains in the observation lounge seemed like the perfect spot to sit with a nice warm coffee. The book cliffs are a series of desert mountains and cliffs in western Colorado and eastern Utah. They are so named because the cliffs appear similar to a shelf of books. While we're up here I'll mention that there is a place to fill your bottles up with water and hand sanitizer, which I appreciated a lot. And just below the observation car, located down a set of steep stairs, is the cafe. Here you'll find a variety of meals, snacks and beverages available for purchase for customers in all classes of travel. I noticed the cafe seemed to be open most of the day, from early morning until late at night. Here you can find tables to sit at and enjoy your meal, as well as condiments, utensils and napkins. <laughs> We have officially approached Colorado. I'm in my next state already. Right now we are going through Ruby Canyon. Apparently this canyon is only accessible by a train or paddleboard boat kayak. I saw a bunch of people paddleboarding kayaking through the Colorado River and so that's pretty awesome. No one can see this place via car. It is beautiful. It's crazy as soon as we hit Colorado the terrain just is so different already. I love how all of the states are so different here. It's so exciting. We've made it to Grand Junction. This is another nice little fresh air stop. I am absolutely making the most of every single time we can hop off the train. Oh, it feels so good to breathe fresh air. As we were approaching Grand Junction, we were told that this is one of the few stops where we would find a convenience store. We would have the opportunity to jump off and stock up on snacks and drinks for the remainder of the journey. And it felt like every single passenger took this opportunity. It's also where I found this interesting drink. I just finished lunch, got myself my third cup of coffee for the day. 
probably my last because my attendant just alerted me he's turned off the coffee machine now. It's only meant to be from 6 to 11 but he left it going on just a little bit longer so I'm forever grateful for that. He's also just put down my seats once again because as tempting as it is to keep your bed up I think it's nice to have that transition from daytime to nighttime, especially if you're on the train for as long as I am. Apparently in about 30 minutes we're approaching Glenwood Springs which is I've heard a very touristy but beautiful area. We get another fresh air stop there which I'm looking forward to and I've of course just finished my lunch which was completely delicious but a very interesting lunch. I got a veggie burger that came with nothing on it. <laughs> but just literally the patty and the bread. And on the side was just some crisp potato chips. You know, not very healthy, <laughs> but very yummy. Like I'm, I'm gonna get that again tomorrow probably. I want to visit. I'm gonna have a list a mile long. That is, my friends, the Colorado River right there that we're just gliding on next to this whole time. That looks like a very nice place to camp. Wow. One of the absolute highlights on the California Zephyr is no doubt soaring through the Rocky Mountains, and we were minutes away. Although I had a peculiar feeling that everyone else would do the same, I decided to head to the observation car. With the floor to ceiling windows, I cannot think of a better way to take in the Rockies. It was definitely the busiest I had seen the lounge, but I managed to nab a seat of my own. What I didn't realize is that to accompany our journey, we would be given what sounded like a science lesson. Based on the atoms. Now, what is an atom? Well, first of all, we gotta use a term called micro and macro. We know what micro means, really small, and macro means really big. It was a fascinating and unexpected surprise to be able to learn so much as we traveled through this breathtaking part of the world. It was at this point too we were alerted we had officially reached the halfway mark on our journey to Chicago. Keep your eyes open folks, uh, it's common to see with those black bears running about. But if you don't see any bears you're just gonna have to grin and bear it. Tonight on the menu, I got the rigatoni pasta with plant-based mints, green beans, and some cute little circular carrots. I got the same salad as I had last night because it was really nice and I love brie cheese. And I opted for a Heineken tonight rather than a wine. Oh my gosh, yum. The plant-based mints on board is actually really good. Just like the plant-based burger for lunch was so good. I'm getting so full. Just like on a plane, the constant eating, but staying seated in the same position. Whew. I think I was watching a guy who does these videos on YouTube and he was saying to bring something like prunes just to stay regular on the trains. I forgot what his name is. You guys might know him. He's like a really big YouTuber. Jeb Brooks, that's the one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are about to enter the market title. 6.2 miles long, 9,300 feet. We're gonna go to the heart of a mountain. Here we go. Here is darkness for the next 10 minutes. Oh my goodness. This is so delicious. I can't tell if I like the white chocolate cheesecake or this better. All the desserts have been the best part of dinner, for sure. As the sun began to disappear behind the mountains, I thought this would be a perfect time to check out the shower situation. Wish me luck. Now it's time for my very first shower on board. Conditioner, soap, towels, and we were given our own hand towel cloth things in our room in our cupboard. I guess this here is for your soiled towels. And then this is the shower. And I'm definitely gonna keep my sandals on inside, I think. Okay, you just had to push that way harder than I was pushing it. Oh my god! Okay. Whew. That was honestly better than I ever expected. It was piping hot. I even had to turn it down a little bit because it was so hot. The water pressure, once I figured out how hard I need to push the button to get it going, was perfect. 
Oh, and every minute or so you have to press the button again as the water will turn off automatically. Way better than I expected. Highly recommend having a shower in Amtrak. Around 9 p.m. we had arrived in Denver, Colorado. And it was time for that slightly longer stop on the journey. We were given lots of warning and preparation too, which was nice. I took this 25 minute opportunity to find an ATM or cash machine because silly me, I forgot about tipping over here. So if you're a foreigner like me, don't forget to bring some cash on board so that you're able to tip your servers and your train attendant, especially if yours is as awesome as Greg. With with about 20 minutes remaining, I made the most of the outdoors and walked up and down these perfectly placed stairs located right next to the train. Thank you. Last night was not as smooth of a sleep. The train was definitely a lot bumpier. We overnight have been traveling through Nebraska. According to my Google Maps, we're literally just about on the border to cross into Iowa. My usual morning routine commences. I head straight upstairs for a coffee, come back to the room, stare in awe out the window for an hour or so until room service is delivered. The scenery had changed dramatically once again. We'd moved from the Rockies into flatter territory. Farms, crops, and many more cute little towns. Breakfast is served. Sorry to be boring, but honestly, all I felt like on this train for breakfast was oatmeal. There are some other fun looking breakfast options though, like French toast, breakfast quesadilla, and omelette, if you're feeling a little more adventurous than me. Oatmeal in Iowa. We are about to approach our first fresh air break of the day. It's called Otumwa. Woo, Otumwa is hot. This is definitely the hottest fresh air break we've had so far. A few more hours pass by as I work on my computer in the much, much quieter lounge. And before I knew it, it was time for a burger with a side of more farmland and little towns. It's great to see this time there's some greens and I got the option of cheese this time. It looks as though we're about to cross the Mississippi River and cross into another state. We're officially in Illinois, my final state before I hop off this train. Our next and final fresh air stop is gonna be coming up, Galesburg or something like that, somewhere in Illinois. It's definitely important to get a lot of stretches during your trip. Just when I thought the scenery had stopped, we just went through an incredibly cute little town. I think I read that it was called Mendota. Aside from all of the mountains and forests and streams and lakes, I think my favorite thing is honestly going through the cute little towns. It's definitely my highlight on this trip. So how much did this train cost me? I paid $1,900 US for my entire journey across the states. That number may sound big, but how I look at it, this was not only my travel cost from A to B, but also my meals, drinks, a dedicated attendant, private accommodation for three nights, and fancy lounge access, which I will show you in the next episode. Because of course, the train travel does not stop here. We're about uh, three miles out from our final destination of Chicago. California Zephyr train is apparently 51 hours and 20 minutes, but we were delayed a couple hours, so I'm gonna say almost 54 hours living in this room, on this train, and boy, has it been an adventure. I cannot recommend this highly enough. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity, and if you've clicked on this, I bet you're already thinking about doing it yourself. This is your sign to book this journey and just explore a country in an entirely different way. And although I might be getting off in Chicago, I'm only transiting there. 
I am hopping on another Amtrak train and traveling all the way to New York City. Let's see if it's exactly the same or completely different. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up, really would appreciate it, and subscribe so you never miss an episode.